Hi everyone, Debbie Shing here coming to you live from Toronto, Ontario. I'm a wine professional going on 20 years in Canada's wine business, now running my own agency, Cuvée Group, as well as teaching WSET, which is a wine diploma at IWEG Drinks Academy, um, as well as helping out on the boards of CAPS Ontario, the local uh, sommeliers association, as well as Drinks Ontario, the local trade association. And uh, recently in summer of 2020, I founded a not-for-profit uh, organization called Venequity with the help of uh, six other co-founders um, in the wake of uh, the incident of George Floyd and the whole Black Lives Matter uh, movement peaking last summer. Um, this organization aims to uh, benefit people of color trying to advance in Canada's wine industry. So on that note, I'd like to introduce a fellow Venequity co-founder, my friend and colleague, Chef Kerry Rao. Um, Kerry. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, yes, my name is Carrie Rao. I am a chef uh, first and foremost. I work as a research and development chef um, a, in a test kitchen, uh, which is great. Uh, I also work at George Brown in the um, Cullen, in, sorry, in the um, ICC, which is the inventory department. Uh, we get all the food together for all of the classes. I am also a wine educator like Debbie at IWEG Drinks Academy. And I have a WSET diploma, as well as I am a CAPS sommelier student, getting ready to write my exam in the next couple of weeks. So it, wine is on the brain right now. <laughs> That's right. Well, it'll soon be on our palettes as well. We've got a really exciting flight of um, actually wine, beer and spirits for you all to enjoy tonight. So big thanks to the LCBO for having us. Um, and just a reminder to everyone, I'm sure you're not on the road right now because there's nowhere to go during this uh, <laughs> pandemic situation. However, please drink responsibly and don't drink and drive. If you do have any questions or comments for us tonight, please feel free to tweet at us um, on the LCBO Twitter or to please um, type in your questions in the YouTube chat box below. So um, Carrie has got some uh, chocolate enjoyment tips and tricks for you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Debbie. So uh, a few tips and tricks. So chocolate comes from the ancient Aztec word chocolato, meaning bitter water. Um, the percentage of chocolate indicates the amount of cocoa and cacao butter inside. So for example, 70% cho dark chocolate has a higher amount of the cocoa liqueur and butter. And also if it's listed on the label, chances are you are getting a better quality chocolate. Other tips and tricks we have. Um, white chocolate is not considered real chocolate only because it does, doesn't does have the chocolate solids. Um, it only has the cacao butter. Um, store your chocolate in tightly wrapped uh, conditions in a dark, cool place. Um, try not to keep it in your refrigerator. Um, it will bloom. So bloom blooming means that it'll get streaky and blotchy um, which you can still eat, but it might not be as optimal on the palate. Ah, thank you, Carrie. Well, I feel a little bit guilty because I actually do keep my chocolate in the fridge, but I think after learning this, um, it's taught me one thing, which is to eat my chocolate a little bit faster so I can get rid of it quickly yeah. before it does the <laughs> whole eat it all at once. blooming thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, uh, I guess we'll start with our first um, product. And again, if you guys have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, please feel free to type in the YouTube chat box or tweet at us uh, live on Twitter. So the first uh, product that we have to share with you guys today is Lefe Brun. Let's try that all together, guys. Cheers, Carrie, by the way. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Mm. Awesome. So this is kind of like a medium bodied, you know, fairly malty beer. It's got a little hint of that malty sweetness. It is dry, but it has a bit of a malty sweetness on the finish. And we really wanted to highlight these flavors along with that kind of roasted grain note in this beer um, with some food suggestions. So um, uh, when we describe some of the foods later uh, tonight, Carrie's going to actually explain the chocolates that go perfect, but also some uh, really creative um, ethnic dishes just to highlight some um, traditional cuisines of Black, Indigenous, and uh, people of color uh, uh, origins. 
Cheers. Awesome. Cheers. Um, your food suggestions um, for this kind of creamy meat and body beer, Carrie? Yeah. So let's start with our chocolate pairing first. Um, I'm going to go through with each um, uh, product and we'll talk about the chocolate pairing and then I'll suggest an athletic dish. So for Left Brune, um, to pair with it, I would do some dark chocolate, 50 to 60 percent. Uh, the flavors mm. really play off that cocoa, the vanilla, um, some of the dried fruit that's on the palate there goes really well. Um, for an ethnic dish, I think that it would be great with a mole, uh, a nice, deep, rich, uh, richly spiced Mexican mole that you can melt some of that dark chocolate in there. And I think yeah. that the flavors in that would really hold up well to uh, the beer. So cheers. <laughs> now amazing. I want mole. <laughs> I'm I'm thirsty and hungry now, Carrie. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> um, that's wonderful. So we're going to move on to um, a little bit of a different flavor, but still sparkling. So the next product that we'd like to share with you all tonight is Henkel Rosé. So this is a German uh, sparkling wine. It is a rosé. Got it right here. Mm. Nice price got point. Bright Beautiful price point, and I do see that it's on sale. So um, it's a really nice off dry wine that's bright and fruity. It's got nice red berry flavors. Mm. The bubbles are quite persistent, so you'll see that it works really wonderfully to uh, refresh and cleanse the palate. And Carrie, what are some of the foods that you might suggest to go with um, Henkel Rose? Awesome. Well, with the Rose, uh, let's do the chocolate pairing first again. So for our chocolate pairing, it because rosé is such a food friendly drink, and this obviously has a little bit of um, extra residual sweetness, so it's more medium uh, sweetness. Yeah. This would go really great with milk or white chocolate. Perfect to have. Um, also for an ethnic dish, I think that doing some sort of like custard with Turkish or Persian flavors, um, you know, richly spicing that would be fantastic with this wine. Rosé can yeah. be very food friendly and go with a lot of different flavors. And also because uh, custards can be kind of um, creamy and, and on your palate, the acidity mm -hmm. in this wine would be great to cut through that. So it's perfect. Oh, I love it. I love it. Definitely with nice the Turkish delight. Good. Oh yeah, with those, you know, hints of, you know, cardamom and cinnamon. Mm -hmm. I could definitely have this uh, hashtag rosé all day. Um, that sounds great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <You're awesome>. So <laughs> I've got um, our third product to share with you all tonight is um, a little bit darker, a little bit more mysterious. You've probably seen it on the shelf and wondered, what is this? Well. It's Apothic Red and Hello Big Red Wine. Um, so I've got it here in a big goblet, which is probably worthy of a big red wine such as this. Um, Apothic Red is from California. And this wine really showcases its warm climate origins nicely with its taste profile. So you've got lots of juicy, dark, black, plummy fruit. Mm. And rich, smooth tannins. So for those of you guys that enjoy big red wines, this is a textbook example right here. Um, have you guys tried this style of wine before? I mean, um, again, please feel free to you know tweet at us or comment to us on the YouTube chat box. Let us know what you think while Carrie explains some of the suggested food options for Apothic Red. Yes, so with this Apothic Red, um, because it does have a little bit of sweetness as well, um, and also like the rich mocha, chocolate flavors, this would really go great paired with dark chocolate, 70% and up. Um, and also, if you're gonna choose to put into a dish, maybe I'm not gonna go quite so ethnic with this, maybe a nice rich black uh, forest cake, the sweetness would really pair well with that. Um, but for an ethnic, maybe an ethnic dish, maybe we do a coffee, a cocoa rub on a steak oh, yeah. on the barbecue. Mm. I think that would go really well to play off the flavors in the wine. Yeah, I'm loving that. That sounds really delicious. And in fact, afterwards, I'll 
probably be surfing Uber Eats tonight to see who <laughs> on earth offers this combination because it sounds really delicious to me. Um, and oh, we have our first uh, incoming question from Sophie Doe. Hello, Sophie. She asks, what chocolate pairs best with port? Mm, thank you very much for that question. And I guess just to kind of, you know, set up uh, the answer um, a little bit, there are a few different types of port out there. So um, certainly you have, you know, probably the more um, famous uh, ruby port. So that includes late bottle vintage port, vintage port, standard ruby port, um, which are wines that have not seen um, oxygen prior to going into um, the bottle. And um, that's one type of port. And then the second type is a tawny port, which has um, undergone a, an aging process that involves oxidation. So you're going to get a lot more, you know, toasty, nutty flavors as opposed to ruby port. That's a little bit more, you know, just rich and, you know, directly focused on, you know, dark, big uh, black fruit. So Carrie, any thoughts on what chocolate pairs best with uh, different types of port? Yeah, so usually with uh, more red berry flavored ports, I usually like to do like dark chocolate, nice, deep, rich, dark chocolate. And then with the more oxygenated or oxidized, sorry, ports that are more tawny in style, I really, really love getting like a fruit nut bar, something that has a little bit of different flavors in it. So that goes really well. Yeah. It kind of highlights all the dried fruit notes in the tawny port. So yeah in I fact i you. love actually having port and just a little nibble of chocolate um in the evening as like a as a nightcap so <laughs> yes i could not agree more you will probably uh find me doing that just before i hit the pillow tonight <laughs> um we've got one more question actually from darren somir hello darren it's nice to meet you and your surname if that is your surname is actually also a wine appellation so how cool is that um darren asks we have just discovered that dark mint chocolate seems to go really well with the big reds thoughts ladies well okay i'll um you know answer first go and for then it, Harry, i'll bounce it over to you yeah awesome so thank you so um dark mint chocolate okay so uh mint chip ice cream is one of my favorite ice cream just sidebar in case anyone <laughs> wants to fedex me some mint chocolate chip ice cream um <laughs> i love that comment because there's some certain big red wines that are you know often made in regions that tend to exude you know notes of cedar or mint just by virtue of the climate and the country that it comes from so think of let's say um left bank bordeaux for example or even kunawara cabernet sauvignon from australia um, and even to a certain extent you know um hawks bay you know bordeaux style red blends from new zealand or um you know some wines from the pacific northwest they often have um a quite high toned um herbaceous flavor that does pair really well um, with mint and spearmint in food. So love that comment. Carrie, any other thoughts from your end? Well, we always talk about food and wine pairing as far as um, how like sensory actions uh, happen in your mouth. And a lot of times really with sweet desserts or sweetness, you do want to pair it with a sweeter, um, something that's as sweet as the wine. But honestly, mm -hmm. Uh, what I like to tell everybody is whatever floats your boat is the was the way to go. So if you really love dark mint chocolate with reds, with big reds, go for it. It's all about your enjoyment. So there's no wrong answer ever. And I agree with Debbie oh. with some of those wines. Love it. Thanks, Gary. Um, Good we've question, got one Darren. More question. Yes, Darren. Props. Um, We've got one more question from Laura. Hello, Laura, um, before I move on to the uh, next product in our flight. So Laura asks, do you have any favorite local chocolatiers? Well, Chef Kerry, please take that away. I really do. So I love Soma. Soma chocolate is um, a treat for me. Every time a holiday comes around, I definitely need to shop there to treat myself which is great so i often go to 
King Street or the distillery. Um, if you're ever there, they have these beautiful glass windows and you can watch them tempering chocolate or putting in the molds, etc. So it's always a bit of a show as well. Um, and mm. another chocolate maker that I really love working at George Brown, there's a, some fantastic uh, chef instructors there. And Coco Fortunato, um, who is, her name is Sarah Fortunato, she, I bought her Mendiants over the, the holidays and they're fantastic. She does a lot of beautiful chocolate work. So yeah, there's many, many chocolate uh, chocolatiers in Toronto and please go out and explore for sure. Love it. Thanks, Carrie. The chocolate expert slash chef hath spoken. I have nothing more to, to add to that. So um, let's move on, I guess, to the next product, which um, hopefully your palates are primed to appreciate the dulcet tones of Lakeview Cellars Vidal Ice Wine VQA. Hopefully you guys can see that. There you go. Cheers, everyone. So um, a little bit on ice wine. So ice wine, as many of you are familiar, you know, if you've ever gone into a duty free store, for example, or any tourist attraction, it's Canada's hallmark wine specialty. And it can only be made of uh, grapes that have been frozen on the vine at a temperature of minus eight degrees Celsius for at least three days in a row. Um, so these grapes are often picked also um, in the middle of the nights uh, before the sun is up in order to prevent the grapes from thawing out uh, uh, during sunrise. So what happens is the frozen water content in these frozen grapes gets uh, doesn't end up in the resulting wine because they stay as ice crystals. So what you get in the resulting product is extra concentrated acidity and sweetness naturally, plus this really explosive, exotic, tropical, um, and orchard fruit flavors. So, um, oh yeah, that's exactly what I'm smelling in the glass right now. And it's rich and uh, delicious. Mm. So for first timers who have never tried ice wine or, you know, for those with sensitive teeth and gums, because we are talking about, you know, a pretty high level of sugar here. And like yourselves, I too am a delicate flower. Um, we suggest you try this in maybe a lighter version. So, um, you know, try cutting this ice wine with a little bit of, say, sparkling water and a drop of bitters and or maybe some elderflower syrup to make a really beautiful ice wine cocktail. That's a really nice sort of primer to start appreciating uh, ice wine. And it also makes the bottle last a little bit longer, too. So, Carrie, over to you for your thoughts on food pairings. All right. So chocolate with this. It, any any kind really, um, but because it's such a full, rich, um, sweet sort of style of, of wine, um, you can pair it with uh, milk chocolate and uh, any kind of chocolate really, um, but also ice wine truffles. So really cool fun fact, there is a company called Belfries that's located in Alliston, Ontario, and they use Lake, Lakeview Cellars ice wine in their truffles. So they've already come up with those beautiful pairings already, but you can, any sort of chocolate dessert can kind of go with this. It'll be great. And also with the high acidity in the ice wine, it'll help kind of cut through that richness as well. So it'll pair and balance and uh, be great. Yes, that's right. That's um, sounding super delicious. Um, I personally have, you know, one uh, cultural favorite that I like to pair ice wine with as it's uh, really popular amongst tourists, especially from, you know, East Asia um, and whatnot. Uh, some of my favorite dishes to pair with ice wine are things that are, you know, um, kind of matching ice wine and its level of exoticness and spiciness. And so in the spirit of Chinese New Year, as tonight is Chinese New Year's Eve and tomorrow uh, we're ringing in the year of the ox, um, you know, I'd like to recommend uh, some, you know, Chinese five spice rubbed, you know, duck breast or, you know, um, you know, pork tenderloin for really nice kind of contrasting um, food pairing. And uh, I think, Personally, that would be really delicious. And really great with so, that ice wine cocktail. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, right? Um, 
uh, that is probably what I will be having this weekend. Um, so we've nice. got a couple more. Um, <laughs> we've got a couple more exciting products uh, to share with you all tonight. So the next product um, that we have is Mill Street uh, Vanilla Porter. And this is a creamy bodied dark beer. Um, and of course, as those of you who uh, live in our home province may know, Mill Street is a local brewery. So mm. can you all taste that kind of dark, malty, you know, chocolatey profile there? It's got a really nice sort of, you know, silky smooth body, again, with a little hint of that sweet uh, vanilla spice. So um, I'll turn it over to Carrie for her food recommendations with this beer. And then uh, I think we've got a couple of questions coming in from the internet. So we'll turn to those in just a sec. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So uh, chocolate pairing to go with this beer uh, because it's nice and rich, lots of vanilla, lots of chocolate flavors already in there. Um, with some dried fruit undertones. Um, I think it would go really great with some coffee flavored chocolate. So anything mm. in a dessert that you could have coffee flavors with that chocolate would be fantastic. Um, also to pair with an ethnic dish, uh, maybe a nice grilled shawarma platter or a wrap with really garlicky teeny. I think that would go really well. It's got a nice full body so I could balance the fullness, the richness um, of that dish as well. So my suggestion. Oh, beautiful. That sounds so beautiful. Now I don't know whether to continue on my Uber Eats search for, you know, Black Forest cake and, you know, coffee cocoa rubbed steak or if I should run down to the shawarma place down the street because, you know, I've got too many options now. Um, but that's pretty exciting. Um, and also, we've got a couple questions, as I mentioned, uh, coming in from the interwebs. So thank you to Hank the Tank 7777. Hello, Hank the Tank. He asks, what would you pair with white chocolate? Oh, that's really interesting. So um, again, you know, maybe just a little bit of a recap. White chocolate uh, really contains basically 0% uh, cocoa. Yeah. So it's a bit more, you know, richer and oilier in body. Carrie, do you have any suggestions? Um, yeah, I mean, if you, it's really a sweet dessert. So uh, you're really looking at the sugar content and the sweetness with, with white chocolate. And so mm. I would pair it with something that has a little bit of um, acidity and, you know, sparkling wine, champagne would go really great with it. Any sort of ice wine or sweet dessert wine, I think would go really well with that as well. What about you? Yeah, what do you I'm think, big, Debbie? Um, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I, I love yeah. all of your suggestions. I think also, too, since, you know, V-Day is coming up and all, and it is kind of the reason why we are on the small screen in front of you. Um, yeah. I'd probably suggest something, you know, if you were to use white chocolate, maybe, you know, dip some strawberries or some raspberries and some melted white chocolate and enjoy it with the Henkel Rosé. It has those bubbles. It has that kind of yeah. berry flavor um, to pair uh, really nicely with white chocolate. So that's great. A um, couple more questions here. Danielle Mayo. Hello, Danielle Mayo. What would you pair with Carmen Air? I guess that, oh, that also rhymes, which I totally love. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so again, <laughs> Carmen Air is a type of wine, again, big, bold, rich red wine, often aged, you know, in the premium versions, often aged in oak barrels. So what you get is a really sort of actually naturally rich, almost dark chocolatey, dark olive um, flavor in the type of wine. So, um, you know, personally for me, and then I'll turn it over to Carrie, what I would like to pair with Carmen Air that's um, a chocolate pairing is, um, well, right here in downtown Toronto, just a couple steps away from my home, is a really wonderful local bakery called Fornal Cultura. And sometimes, not all the time, they have these really nice um, ch dark chocolate cannelés, which are a French pastry, but secretly they hide a little nugget of black olive in there and it sounds like a totally bizarre combination but it's so good you've got that sort of bitterness from the chocolate you've got that sort of earthiness from the olive going together in a bit of a sweet pastry it really just fires on all of your sensual cylinders and so that's personally what i would pair 
um, with Carmen Air. Carrie, over to you. And then we've got one more question. Yeah, I would probably do, um, you know, when you're doing a lot of big batch cooking, uh, feeding a crowd. Um, I really like doing chili, something like deep and rich chili Ooh. with adding some chocolate into that. Um, I use a lot yes. of smoky peppers and a lot of herbs. So, oh, wow. you know, lots of, uh, you know, Mexican oregano, lots of uh, guajillos, yes. smoked anchos. So I think that, you know, you can hide a nice chunk of 90% uh, dark chocolate in there and no one mm. will know. And I think that would go really well with Carmen here. Carrie, you are speaking my language there. Those are some amazing Carmenere um, food suggestions. Thank you. Um, okay, so we've got um, one more sort of like combo question. And then we've got also one more product to try with you all. So we'll address um, Darren Somir, who's back on the board with um, oh. a really awesome question, actually. And hello again. So Darren asks, okay, some of the boys here need help with Valentine's Day. Debbie, what wine right now is your number one pick? Ooh, under a hundred bucks. Under oh, big spender. Okay. That's a nice um, budget. Nice budget. That's a nice budget. You know, like I maybe you don't need as much help as you think. Um, and then so that's a question for me. And then Carrie is asking, what do we pair with that for dinner and dessert? Oh my goodness. So Okay, um, something that I'm personally really interested in, um, I guess for premium wines, I guess I've got a couple options here that hopefully will help you to earn some points with, uh, with the ladies. Um, what wine right now under $100? Personally, I would try to pick either the best, you know, champagne from France, possible so you know if you had a hundred dollars maybe try to get you know a um grand cru or single vineyard or even a vintage champagne these have often been aged for longer than the um required amount of time for aging champagne and so what you get is not only a sparkling wine which obviously bubbles bring forth happiness but you also get this extra style of um, complexity, a little bit of toastiness, a little bit of nuttiness, and um, in a little bit more silky texture of a wine than normally expected, that would be a pick um, for sure under $100 um, at the LCBO. Uh, alternatively, for those of you who are looking for a still wine, I would try to look for something, um, probably something like a, you know, really nice single vineyard Pinot Noir. Personally, I love uh, red wines that are a little bit more finessed and um, soft in texture, but high on complexity. So I would look to areas such as, you know, central Otago in New Zealand or, um, you know, Willamette Valley in Oregon, or of course, you know, um, uh, every cork dork's favorite appellation, which is Burgundy. So those would be my recommendations for, uh, hundred dollars or less and Carrie any thoughts on pairing this with dinner and dessert well dinner and dessert you're asking for two things um, for two <laughs> different courses and types of food one that has uh, more savory and then of course one that's more sweet so again mm. the obvious choice would be some sort of sparkling um, if you are already spending your big budget on that uh, Grand Cru or, or uh, Premier Cru Burgundy, maybe you want to kind of save a little bit of money in your budget. And instead of going for a champagne, you can always pick something that's really beautiful, um, still from the, you know, the region of Burgundy, and you can get a nice uh, rosé Cremant. And Cremant will still have uh, that acidity to kind of work and the sweetness, a little bit of residual sweetness to work with the dessert, but also rosé again, like we said, food friendly. It'll it'll be yeah. a good pairing for a lot of different courses. So that's what I personally would pick. Um, and Cremant, you can have one, maybe two bottles. So that's true. That's true. Great. When it comes to Valentine, when it comes to Valentine's Day, more is more. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And. Personally, for me, I think in terms of food pairings that I would pair with actually both um, sparkling and Pinot is probably something light because, you know, 
if you are trying to have a very serious Valentine's Day, then there's probably going to be some um, activity happening afterwards, you know, something physical perhaps. And so I would probably keep it kind of light and maybe have, you know, like a simple charcuterie and cheese plate um, to go with yeah. that, just to keep it, you know, simple. Um, so yeah. we've got one more product and then we've got actually a, a couple of great couple questions, questions to kind of end off the evening. So um, our final product is Five Farms Single Batch Irish Cream. All right, so um, a little bit more premium, but actually really, really interesting. So I don't know about you guys, but this is my first time trying an artisanally crafted liqueur. Carrie, have you ever tried something like this before? No, actually, I think I've just had um, the other, you know, uh, brands that you find on the market, um, but this is really mm -hmm. delicious. So yeah. I'm excited. Um, it almost tastes a little bit like, um, like those little soft caramels, like the craft yes, soft absolutely. caramels. Yeah, it's yeah, delicious. Totally. I love that. It has that little bit of that nutty kind of like Werther's original mm -hmm. note to it. So um, I did a little bit of, oh yes, butterscotch. I love that note. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did a little bit of uh, detective work um, because this is my first time trying this lovely product. And what I found out is that Five Farms Irish Cream is um, quite a sort of like craft product. So it's produced in County Cork, Ireland, and it actually has really amazing awards. So this is the highest rated um, Irish cream style of product out there in the whole world. So including a 97 points from the Ultimate Spirit Challenge. So not too nice. shabby um yeah and why it is is that it's made in small batches um using you know cream delivered directly from five local farms that they work exclusively with so um yeah i find this really interesting i pick up you know the same notes that uh carrie is mentioning of you know butterscotch and caramel and obviously that really nice sort of little uh, uh whiskey note here in that um in that irish cream and you know for those of you who are into mixology I encourage you guys to try this in a specialty coffee. You know, to me, this is um, the perfect thing to wake up to on a Sunday morning with a cup of joe, um, nice. or even with, <laughs> or even with the um, you know vanilla porter that we were trying before. You know, to make a fun boozy ice cream float. So um, I I know I'm only talking about beverages, so maybe we should talk about yeah. food. Carrie, <laughs> what are your food pairing suggestions? Yeah, so uh, this would definitely be paired well with um, milk or or uh, white chocolate for sure, um, right. especially with a little bit of flaky salt in it as well. I think that would go really, really well. Um, and then also ethnic dishes. So if we get back to like talking about, you know, Mayan hot chocolate with chilies and cinnamon, this would be something nice to kind of swirl in and, and amp it up a little bit. And even like a Caribbean cocoa tea you could – um, add some of this to kind of make it like more of a of a, a boozy kind of cocktail, especially during the winter time, yeah. which would be great and warming. So, oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely, that's yeah, delicious. Yeah. And it I is, also think that the it's really good. the packaging is premium. It's it comes in a beautiful bottle with the closure. It's it's gorgeous. So they put a lot of love yeah. into this. That's right. It's yeah, great. I really love this bottle i'll probably you know save it instead of recycling it so that i can probably you know put a nice uh flower you know from my valentine's day date or whatever or, yes you know yes um it is really it is really beautiful and um mm -hmm. yeah i guess actually since we're on this product um maybe we can answer a question from michelle carlini sent in hello michelle um she asks what is the best wine to enjoy with cheesecake? Well, so I guess, you know, since there's so many different forms of cheesecake, um, you know, one of the things that came to mind when I was tasting this was actually that this would be a really wonderful pairing with cheesecake, mm -hmm. particularly if you had um, this uh, Irish cream warmed up and maybe shave some dark chocolate shavings over top. I think that would be a really great dessert pairing and the heat would kind of stave off a little bit of, um, of the booziness. Um, but uh, if I was to pair cheesecake with wine, and you know, personally, I prefer the type of cheesecake that's just plain, like that kind of New York style um, cheesecake, I'd probably pair that with like a really nice 
rich, um, sunny, like California Chardonnay, something that has equal amount of um, creaminess, but still has that bright fruity flavor and a little bit of acidity yep. to to refresh your palate um, after enjoying cheesecake. Carrie, any thoughts? Yep. Um, and we've got one. No, more question. I agree. Yep, I agree. You kind of need the weight and richness and the mm -hmm. body to kind of pair with that. So that's a perfect pairing. Um, I really agree with that. And also like even some salted caramel sauce on top of that cheesecake Ooh. would even make it better. So yeah, yep. absolutely. Yes. Carrie, why are you right. not single? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, everything you're saying right now sounds like the perfect yes. Thursday night date, which you are. Yeah. Which you are the perfect Thursday night Thank date. you. Um, <laughs> uh, we've got a couple more questions. So Kathy Canessa asks, hello, Kathy. Thoughts for ginger or orange chocolate? Ooh, I really like that question. Um, okay, so uh, I'll go first and then uh, Carrie, if you have any other suggestions. Personally, I think that again, um, those of you that were asking about single malt whiskey, I would maybe pick mm -hmm. something that's um, less on the peaty side of single malt whiskey, but something like a Glenmorangie Nectar Door that has that really sort of bright, um, you know, um, whiskey tone, but with a little bit of that preserved um, fruit and spice would go really well with something like a ginger or orange chocolate or again, we're talking about uh, tawny port. It's got that nuttiness and those exotic, you know, spices and, and tones will really go well against that. Carrie, mm -hmm. any thoughts on your end? Yeah, um, I think like uh, something like a nice sauterne, something that has a little bit of mm. that ginger and marmalade flavors in it to kind of, you know, yes. play along with that. And it would yeah. be nice and sweet with the, with the chocolate, which, you know, milk chocolate, uh, if it's milk chocolate, but it would be nice and sweet, and I think it would work really well. So, yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that is that is actually so perfect as well. So, turn wonderful pairing. Um, awesome. And last but not least, we have a comment um, through Twitter. Thank you so much for commenting to us on Twitter. We have a comment from at j underscore underscore chianfrini. Hello, j. He asks. I've always found Guinness and dark chocolate go very well together. Thoughts? Okay, well, I do have thoughts. And um, actually kind of the vanilla porter that we were trying from Mill Street is quite similar to that. And it actually does come in a draft style um, tall can because, you know, for me, whenever I think of Guinness, I think the perfect Guinness is always the one that's served on tap. And so, you know, oh, now I'm really missing uh, you know, restaurants. I really hope that, you know, our restaurant uh, friends and family can bounce back from this pandemic. So, you know, this last sip goes to you guys. Cheers to all our friends in the restaurant industry. Um, you know, that smooth creaminess of um, Guinness on tap, plus that, you know, just the nature of dark stout. It does really match dark chocolate very well because again, you've got some milk solids in dark chocolate, but you also have these really nice um, bitter tannins as we explained earlier on that sort of drying effect of dark chocolate, a really nice sort of complementary match to Guinness. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Carrie, any, any thoughts on your end for uh, Guinness? Um, yeah. And I've actually baked quite a bit with Guinness in chocolate cakes mm. and brownies, um, which is really great. You can use that as part of your liquids that are going to go in with the uh, dry goods when you're making your cake. So uh, it's a it's a natural pairing and it works well. And and you know it's been made a million times. So go out and make some Guinness dark chocolate brownies right now, and maybe even swirl oh. some tahini in there. Ooh, yeah. swirl some tahini in there. I love it. Have it yeah. with some of this porter or, you know, the Irish yep. cream. Ooh. Hopefully you guys have um, come up with, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, hopefully you guys have all come up with some really great date night inspiration for Valentine's Day weekend. Um, you know, just on behalf of myself and Carrie, Thank you so much for um, having us, LCBO. Thank you everyone out there for tuning in on YouTube. Just a quick reminder that all of these products that we covered tonight can be purchased in store or also on lcbo.com. And there's a few options here. So you can order online and choose the deliver to store option at checkout. Um, your order will arrive at the store in about 14 days and you'll get an email saying that it's ready for pickup um, at a time that's convenient for you. 
when you arrive, your order will be packed and ready to go. Or you can also order same day pickup, which, you know, if you need it today, and of course, since we're in a <laughs> pandemic situation, no judgment if you need it today, I need it yesterday. You can shop online at lcbo.com at one of our, um, one of the 100 plus same day pickup locations, and your order will be packed and ready for pickup within three hours or less. Not too bad. Um, and then finally, last but not least, if you don't feel comfortable going into the store, you can also um, select curbside pickup. So um, to find the location nearest you and what services they offer, please visit lcbo.com. Um, and of course, before we close off, I want to um, you know stress that you should all please enjoy responsibly. I uh, salute you with this last final sip. Please don't drink and drive. Wishing you all a very happy Valentine's Day as well as a very happy year of the ox. Wishing you gong hei fa choi, choi guan guan loi. Um, wishing you a very healthy, prosperous um, year 2021. And for those of you who are interested in learning a little bit more about uh, my and Carrie's project, Venequity, you can get in touch with us and learn a little bit more at www.venequity.ca or find us on Instagram at, at vin, v -I -N, dot equity. So thank you so much. Have a great night and stay safe. Wash your hands. Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.